Do I have an original thought in my head? My bald head? Maybe if I were happier, my hair wouldn't be falling out. Life is short. I need to make the most of it. Today's the first day of the rest of my life. I'm a walking cliche. I really need to go to the doctor, have my leg checked. There's something wrong. A bump. The dentist called again. I'm way overdue. If I stopped putting things off, I would be happier. All I do is sit on my fat ass. If my ass wasn't fat, I would be happier. I wouldn't have to wear these shirts with the tails out all the time. Like that's fooling anyone. Fat ass. I should start jogging again. Five miles a day. Really do it this time. Maybe rock climbing. I need to turn my life around. What do I need to do? I need to fall in love. I need to have a girlfriend. I need to read more, improve myself. What if I learned Russian or something? Or took up an instrument? I could speak Chinese. I'd be the screenwriter who speaks Chinese and plays the oboe. That would be cool. I should get my hair cut short. Stop trying to fool myself and everyone else and thinking I have a full head of hair. How pathetic is that? Just be real, confident. Isn't that what women are attracted to? Men don't have to be attractive. But that's not true, especially these days. Almost as much pressure on men as there is on women these days. Why should I be made to feel I have to apologize for my existence? Maybe it's my brain chemistry. Maybe that's what's wrong with me. Bad chemistry. All my problems and anxiety can be reduced to a chemical imbalance or some kind of misfiring synapses. I need to get help for that. But I'll still be ugly, though. Nothing's going to change that. This is Charlie Kaufman. Screenwriter, twin, unfortunate victim to persistent awkwardness. This 40-something Caucasian male lives with his twin brother, Donald, in an apartment they share. Donald does not suffer from social awkwardness and often agitates Charlie as he attempts to enter the world of screenwriting in an unorthodox way and succeeds. Meanwhile, Charlie struggles with self-doubt as he works to adapt a book, The Orchid Thief by Susan Orlean, into a screenplay. Charlie has trouble establishing and maintaining relationships, which is shown by his interactions with multiple others, such as an ex-girlfriend and a waitress working at a local diner. Although he can engage in new conversations, his thoughts quickly distract him from the continuation of dialogue. Charlie appears to suffer from social phobia. This phobia, also known as social anxiety disorder, is a disorder in which a person fears social situations and human interaction, due to the persistent belief that others will negatively evaluate or judge them. This disorder is characterized by eight symptoms. Charlie meets all eight criteria. He displays a persistent fear of situations that expose him to unfamiliar people, intense anxiety when exposed to the feared social situations, avoidance of social situations or endurance with intense distress, disturbance of routine functioning due to avoidance of or distress in social situations, and an acknowledgement of the excessive nature of his fear. In addition, Charlie seems to have dealt with these symptoms for much longer than six months, is not under the influence of medications or any substances like drugs or alcohol, and does not display symptoms which are better accounted for by a different mental disorder. In order to best exemplify social phobia, we will present example scenarios as experienced by Charlie Kaufman, as well as a person without social phobia. First, we'll show you how someone without social phobia would likely interact with someone for the first time. Hi, what can I get for you today? Okay, Twilight. Hi. Hey, is that Twilight? I love Twilight. Yeah, it's actually my guilty pleasure. However, a person with social phobia would experience this much differently. Good afternoon. So what looks good today? Uh, the key lime pie, please. A small slice. And, and a coffee, please. Skim milk, please. Orchids. I love orchids. Well, cool. That's... Huh. Well, I'll be right back with your pie. Someone without social phobia would likely be excited to meet a person of status. A person with social phobia may be afraid to approach a person of status, even if they have been anticipating their meeting.
individual without social phobia would typically not experience extreme discomfort in a dating situation. Thanks for lunch, I had a lot of fun. Me too, I'm glad I got to know you. Yeah, we should hang out again soon. I'll call you. All right, have a good day. Me too. In contrast, someone experiencing social phobia may find a dating experience more awkward than someone without that anxiety and may intensify any present awkwardness. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> so, what are you up to now then? Oh, um, I should probably get to bed. I have a lot of work to do tomorrow. Well, good night then. I would stay out. It's just that I've really been struggling on the script right now. I've been thinking about it too small, just writing it like a story about La Roche. That's not enough. I mean, I wanted to write about flowers. Anyway, I can't figure it out, and I haven't been sleeping very, very well lately, so I thought I should get home and try to get a good night's sleep, you know, start fresh in the morning. Mm. Otherwise, I'd stay out. I understand. I hope you figure it out, Charlie. I really do. Thanks. Thanks for coming out with me and everything. Sure, it was fun. So, well, okay then. Uh, so, good, good night then. Good night. Why didn't I go in? I'm such a chicken. I'm such an idiot. I should have kissed her. I've blown it. I should just go and knock on her door right now and kiss her. It would be romantic. Something we could someday tell our kids. I'm gonna do that right now. Even without social phobia, interviews may be anxiety provoking. However, an individual whose job involves interviewing others should be more comfortable in this setting. Hey, what's up? Not much. What's wrong? Oh, I'm just a little worried about my interview with Dr. Job today. He's really prestigious. You'll be fine. You're great at things like this. Oh, well, thanks. I'm just a little nervous, I guess is all. Thank you. Hi, Dr. Joe. Thank you for meeting with me today. I just have a couple of questions for you. No problem. I'm glad you asked. Where would you like to start? Well, social phobia can intensify anxiety and in social situations to the point of extreme distress or avoidance of expected distress. This may interrupt the routine of an individual's personal or professional life. Maybe, but I think you actually need to speak to this woman to know her. I can't. Really? I'll go. I'll pretend I'm you. But you've got to be exactly me. I have a reputation to maintain. You can't be a goofball. You can't be an asshole. I'm not an asshole. You know what I mean. No flirting. No bad jokes. Don't laugh how you laugh. I'm not going to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so... In addition to meeting these criteria, a person with social phobia usually recognizes that their fear is excessive or unreasonable. You're gonna find us. I don't think so. I don't want to die, Donald. I've wasted my life. God, I've wasted it. You did not. You're not gonna die. I wasted it. I admire you, Donald, you know? I spent my whole life paralyzed, worrying about what people think of me. And you, you're just oblivious. I'm not oblivious. No, you don't understand. I mean that as a compliment. Charlie has generalized social phobia, which applies to most social situations. His anxiety is not specific to a place, person, situation, or group of people. However, he does not have the common comorbid avoidant personality disorder because he does interact with others. The interactions are just awkward and often do not lead to meaningful relationships. Like other phobias, social phobia, or social anxiety disorder, is best treated through exposure therapy. Negative thoughts attached to social situations must slowly be eliminated. Treatment is intensive and extensive, with typically 12 to 16 sessions of consistent dedication on the part of the individual and his or her therapist. Even in a desperate situation, a person with social phobia would not become suddenly assertive. Charlie presents an adequate rendition of a person suffering social phobia. Although they never lead to close relationships, Charlie is able to start conversations with others a few times and so is not completely awkward in social situations. 
The character's portrayed relationship with his twin brother suggests that Charlie probably suffered as a child, watching Donald interact with ease in social situations. As stated before, a person with social phobia would not become suddenly assertive, which is presented as a blatant flaw in the portrayal of a socially phobic individual. Charlie decides on a whim to go meet Susan Orlean, insists on investigating her relationship with the main character of her book, and has outgoing behavior towards the end of his story. The presentation of this sudden freedom from social anxieties is not an accurate portrayal of someone who is, truly suffers from social phobia. However, these are the few inaccuracies in Charlie's depiction of social phobia, resulting in an overall passable illustration. My leg hurts. I wonder if it's cancer. There's a bump. I'm starting to sweat. Stop sweating. I've got to stop sweating. Can she see it tripping down my forehead? Oh, she looked at my hairline. She thinks I'm bald. She's you think you're great? Oh, wow. Thanks. That's, that's nice to hear. Boy, I'd love to find a, a portal into your brain. <laughs> Trust me, it's no fun.